Welcome to World Action and Reaction News, let's start today's news snapshot. Before starting this news session my request to you all, please press subscribe button and press bell icon for regular updates on new video upload, if you are new to this channel, and also press like button if you find this video useful to you. Let's start. Good news from Indian Air Force will have three more women fighter pilots, who are set to join the service in December 2017. The trio of Rashi Raina, Shivanji Singh and Pratibha are currently undergoing the second phase of their training at an IAF flying establishment at High Kimpit, on the completion of which they would be commissioned, sources told DH. Post commissioning the last phase of their flight training would begin in Bidar in North Karnataka. They join the force in June 2017 after two previous rounds of searches by the IAF in 2016 to find out more women pilots for fighter flying remained futile. India's nuclear-powered submarine, INS Chakra, has suffered some damage in an accident and could require substantial repair work to get it back in shape. The attack submarine, obtained on a 10-year lease from Russia, has not sailed for a month and is berthed at its home port of Visakhapatnam for repairs. Sources told the print that the submarine currently India's only operational nuclear-powered vessel suffered damage to its sonar dome in the accident. The sonar dome is located at the forward portion of the submarine, beneath the torpedo tubes. While details of the incident are yet to emerge, Sources said that the damage could be the result of either a collision at sea or accidental scraping while entering the harbour. The Indian Navy refused to comment on the incident. Pakistan today raked up the Kashmir issue again at the UN with its envoy accusing India of spreading terrorism in the valley, drawing a strong reaction from India which described her diatribe as a lonely voice from the wilderness. Pakistan's ambassador and permanent representative to the UN Mali Haladi, during a debate of the General Assembly, also alleged that India made a false claim of conducting surgical strike across the LOC to provoke conflict with Pakistan. Top army commanders will discuss security challenges facing the country, including the recent Doklam standoff, at a six-day conference starting October 9. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitharaman will address the conference, people familiar with the matter said. The commanders will also review security situation in border areas and brainstorm how to keep the forces ready to deal with any challenge, the people said. The top commanders are likely to analyze the ground situation in Jammu and Kashmir with a focus on improving counter-terror operations. Sources said there will be in-depth discussions on over two-month-long standoff between Indian and Chinese troops in Doklam. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said today that his government delivered on the promise made to the ex-servicemen on one rank one pension scheme and it was an indication of the centre's commitment to the Indian Army. He said nearly Rs 8,500 crore have been distributed under the scheme, that had been stuck for nearly 40 years. Address essaying a rally here, Modi said nobody asked why the OROP scheme could not be realised for such a long period. I had announced during the Mandi rally that we will give one rank one pension. Three installments have been given till now. Close to Rs 8,500 crore has been distributed, he said, referring to his rally in 2016. Modi said the fourth installment will be sent soon. I understand that this, amount, puts pressure on the government, but our soldiers are a priority for me, he said. India is committed to not only continuing but also broadening its developmental efforts in Afghanistan, a top Pentagon official told lawmakers on Wednesday. U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis told lawmakers during a Senate hearing on South Asia that this is the sense he got in India during his meetings with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Defense Minister Nirmala Sitharaman and National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. He was in India last week. People of Afghanistan, he said have come to have a deep and abiding affection for the Indian people. There's a collaboration there, based on a very generous and enduring Indian government support for development of the Afghan society since the Soviet invasion, he said they, Indian leadership, are committed to continuing and even broadening their development support and their support of the Afghan defence forces, in terms of repair of their equipment, training their officers and NCOs in their Indian military schools, and training the medical doctors and the medics for the Afghan army to take care of battlefield casualties, 
he said. The Trump administration today threw its weight behind India's opposition to the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC, saying it passes through a disputed territory and no country should put itself into a position of dictating the Belt and Road Initiative. India skipped the Belt and Road Forum, BRF, in May this year due to its sovereignty concerns over the nearly $60 billion CPEC, a flagship project of China's prestigious One Belt One Road, OBOR, which passes through Pakistan occupied. Kashmir, Pak In a globalized world, there are many belts and many roads, and no one nation should put itself into a position of dictating one belt, one road, Mattis told members of the Senate Armed Services Committee during a congressional hearing. That said, the One Belt One Road also goes through disputed territory, and I think, that in itself shows the vulnerability of trying to establish that sort of a dictate, Mattis said apparently referring to India's position on CPEC. In February 2017, two conglomerates India's LNT and MBDA from France joined hands in New Delhi to form a joint venture, LNT MBDA Missile Systems. The JV will have 51% ownership by LNT, and 49% by MBDA. Although MBDA has been in India since 2006, the new venture will explore business opportunities in missiles and missile systems under the new Defence Procurement Procedure, DPP, 2016. Briefing a group of Indian media personnel in Paris, MBDA officials said some of the programmes exclusive to the JV include the missile Moyen Porti, or Medium Range Missile, MMP, a fifth generation anti tank guided missile, ATGM 5. Also featuring in the list are mobile missile coastal batteries and high speed low flying aerial target. In the past, MBDA has been supplying Milan ATGMs. These missiles remain in use with the Indian Army. LNT has the advantage of partnering with a company that is familiar with the Indian Armed Forces. Navy Chief Admiral Sunil Lanba is now headed for Vietnam as part of the overall strategy to steadily build military ties with the country, as with other nations in the Asia-Pacific region, with an eye firmly on a confrontationist and expansionist China. Admiral Lanba, who is India's senior most military officer as chairman of the Chiefs of Staff Committee, will hold talks with Vietnamese PM Nguyen Xuân Phuc, Defence Minister General NGO Xuân Lich. Chief of General Staff Senior LT General Phan Van Jong and Navy Chief Rear Admiral Pham Hoi Nam during his visit from October 4 to 7. Slowly but steadily, the Scorpenny submarine program is making progress. While the first submarine awaits commissioning, the second one has just begun sea trials, and Mazajayan Docks Limited, MDL, is gearing up to launch the third submarine. After the monsoon, the second score Penny Condori began sea trials last week. As per schedule, it is expected to be commissioned within this year. The third submarine Karen J is on track to be launched by year-end, an official told the Hindu. Condori, named after an island fort of Maratha ruler Chhatrapati Shivahi, was launched in January and had undergone some testing. Trials were held up due to rough sea. The Navy formally took delivery of the first submarine Calvary on September 21 and is awaiting its induction. The remaining three are in various stages of outfitting and expected to roll out tentatively in nine-month intervals. Officials said they could be rolled out faster too. The Union Cabinet, chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, on Wednesday gave ex post facto approval to an Mao between India and Myanmar on the upgradation of the Women's Police Training Center at Yamathan. Myanmar. The Memorandum of Understanding, Mao, was signed on September 6 last. The Mao covers upgradation of the Yamathan Women's Police Training Center to further augment the capabilities of the Myanmar government to build capacities of its police force with technical and financial assistance from the Indian government, an official statement said. This Mao was signed during Prime Minister Modi's recent visit to Myanmar. Although it may come across as a regular Tata Safari storm draped with camouflage, Kartok believes that it is in fact the version intended for the Indian Army. Earlier this year, Tata Motors managed to secure a contract for supplying the Safari storm as personnel carrier vehicles to the Indian Army, edging out the Mahindra Scorpio and Maruti Gypsy. Tata will deliver 3,192 units of the storm, 
although we aren't sure when exactly will the public start seeing them on the road. Judging by the spice hots, the safari storm will not have the fancy bling of the regular version. It will ride on heavy-duty steel wheels, the body cladding around the body has been removed, will feature a pintle hook at the rear, an antenna on the bonnet and a fuel carrier attached to the body. The interior will also be stripped out, featuring black fabric seats, manual air conditioning and three-row seating. Under the hood is a 2.2-liter, four-cylinder diesel engine with 150 PS and 350 Nm, paired with a five-speed manual gearbox as standard. The Army Spec Storm is likely to come equipped with 4WD system as standard, with both low and high ranges. It can average a fuel mileage of around 14.1 km L. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel world action and reaction news, warn.